Hello and welcome to the first ever video on this channel. My name is Maddie and behind the camera is my partner Yuma. Today I'm going to be going through the process of creating this gouache painting from start to finish. Before we get started, I want to take a couple moments and talk about our goals and ideas for this channel. If you're interested, keep listening. If you want to skip ahead to the process video, you can click down in the chapters below. Okay, so if you're here for our first ever video, I feel like you probably clicked over from one of my socials or maybe you're part of my live streaming community on Twitch or Behance. I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming over here to check out what we do. On this channel, we're looking to share process videos, videos on specific topics, and techniques, maybe some real-time painting videos or paint-alongs, and also talk about things like how to grow on social media or how to make a living as an artist. We want to know what topics you are most interested in, so please let us know down in the comments. This channel is something that I've been thinking about for a really long time, and I'm looking forward to getting a chance to share a little bit more behind the scenes with you. Now let's get into the painting. The first thing I'm doing here is taping down all four edges of the paper using artist tape. You can usually get this tape at a local art supply store or online. You can see that my palette already has some dried paint from a previous painting. Because gouache can be re-wet, I'll save paint by adding some fresh gouache paint to what was already there. Next, I'll prepare my paper for painting by using a brush to apply clean water evenly across the surface. You want the surface of the paper to be wet but not soaking, so you may need to wait a few seconds for it to sink in before you're ready to begin with the first layer of paint. I'm beginning to lay down paint on the paper using a one inch flat brush. I like to start with uh, larger brushes when I'm blocking in shapes at the beginning of my painting and slowly work towards smaller detailed brushes by the end. Generally, when I'm blocking in, I start with mid-tones, uh, medium value first at the beginning, and then I add shadows and highlights as the painting goes on. Um, for this one, I'm going a little bit darker at the beginning. Uh, this is going to be a foliage painting with the uh, foliage sort of coming out of the shadows. I chose not to make a pencil sketch on my paper because I knew this painting would be pretty dark from the start and my sketch would be covered up after blocking in the background layer. This happens pretty often for me with gouache because it's such an opaque medium. Sometimes I'll make an ink sketch on a separate sheet of paper and refer to it throughout the painting process instead of drawing right on the paper. In order to start painting the next layer, I need the paint of my background to be dry. So in this case, I'm using a hair dryer to speed up that process a little bit. Now that the paper is dry, I'm getting ready to begin with the second layer of paint. I've mixed up a deep purple color and I'm just using a scrap sheet of paper to test and see if I like the color before putting it down on my painting. For the second layer, I'm continuing with a larger brush because I'm still blocking in large areas of the painting. What I'm working on now will be shadows that appear behind the foreground plants. I'm not using a lot of water with my paint right now, so you can see the dry edges creating a more interesting texture. I think this helps give a nice organic look and the illusion of details. I'm using a very long, thin brush to begin painting in the stems of this plant. This is an extended point brush from Rosemary & Co, and I find it very useful in painting grasses and plants, which I do quite often. I'm looking at these lines as something of a sketch layer. I know that I still want to paint some leaves and foliage behind these stems, but it's also important at this phase of the painting for me to know where the stems are going to be placed. A portion of these stems may actually get painted over in the next step as I continue to work on plants further in the background. Now we're finally getting into some mid-tones and the real substance of the painting. I'm still using a relatively large brush, uh, around a 3 quarter inch flat synthetic brush with an angled tip. I really like the angled tip because it works great for making all kinds of organic marks. I've painted over some of the stems as I mentioned I might earlier. Painting over them let me paint more naturally with large, fresh brush strokes. If I had to paint around the stems, I would have had to use small, careful paint strokes that would have had a totally different feeling to them. 
Later in this process, I can repaint the stems and bring them in front of the other foliage once again. As you can see, I've been adding some darker shadows in some areas. I try to use the shadows to create some interesting shapes that I hope will look like dark spaces between groups of leaves. After the shadows, I'm moving back to mid-tones with a slightly lighter shade of green. I'm trying to think about the flow of my brush strokes and angle them so it feels like they're fanning out away from the center of this group of foliage, like a natural bouquet of flowers. With this flat angled brush, I feel like I can get into a nice rhythm with the painting. I can switch between large broad strokes with the wide part of the brush to thin grass-like lines with the edge without switching brushes. One of my favorite techniques, which you can see here, is using the pointed end of the brush to create triangular leaf shapes by pressing the tip lightly down on the paper. If you're interested in seeing a video of these foliage painting techniques more in depth, let us know in the comments. I'm repeating the process with more of these plants, adding shades of green for some depth and variety. Foliage always looks more lively and natural with lots of different shades of green. I like to use blue greens for areas that are more in shadow and brighter yellowish greens for areas that are being illuminated. It's always an exciting part of the painting process when you can start adding in highlights and brighter colors. Usually for me this is somewhat nearer to the end of the process. I wanted this thistle plant to stand out from the rest of the foliage, so I chose a pale bluish color. I used a small round brush with pointed tip to paint the leaves and details. A couple times I was indecisive about where I wanted to paint some of the flowers and stems, so you can see me cover and repaint them. Adding these dark shadows in was really satisfying. I wanted to keep the highest contrast area near the focal point, which is the thistle plant. I'm using the shadow shapes to point towards it and create depth to the foliage. The thistle plant needed a little friend, as Bob Ross would say, so I'm painting in this small plant with brightly colored green leaves. For these leaves, I'm continuing with the same small round brush that I used to paint the thistle. You can create a leaf shape pretty easily by starting with the point end of the brush, pressing down lightly, flattening the belly of the brush against the paper, and then lifting up the end gently. I just repeated this process a few different times to fill in the area. The leaves looked a little flat to me at first, so I added another darker shade of green for some shadows. This stage of the painting is all about details and refining things. It can feel like you're doing quite a lot of painting, but not all that much dramatically changes, so we've sped it up quite a bit here. I was happy with the addition of some of the brown dried looking plants. I felt like that color helped to warm up the scene a little bit and break up areas in the composition that were only blue and green. 
After some last highlights and details, that brings us to the end of the painting. And now, one of my favorite parts of the whole process, the tape peel. It's always really satisfying to see those clean edges. If you ever have trouble removing the tape without ripping your paper, I can recommend warming your paper up with a hair dryer or a heat gun near the tape around the edges. Um, that will loosen the glue first. This usually works pretty well for me. We really hope you enjoyed seeing the process behind this painting and that you learned something. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of our videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.